Hello, everybody. My name is Livio Babitz. Um, I'm a human being just like you guys, but I have a new sense. I have a new piece of technology attached to my body just here with two titanium rods that are inserted into my chest. So people say, Livio, why did you do that? How did you get to that into your life to put a new piece of technology, that rod sense attached to your body? There were three revolutions in my life that I would like to share with you that were part of it. So you know when you are born and you are a kid, everything is possible in life, everything is doable, everything is, is just there, everything can happen, everything can... It, superheroes exist, Santa Claus exists, everything exists. You are an endless world of opportunities. But I was born in Romania in the 90s, in the 80s, sorry, 1980, which was probably the darkest ages of Eastern Europe back in the days. And yes, I was a kid and I was very happy and I had this happy childhood with my family, but the reality out there was very different. There was this endless wall standing in front of us that said, no, you're not allowed to do that and you're not allowed to do that and you have to wear the party uniforms when you go to school and you have to be like everybody else. So it was really very different from the way that I was a kid, that I was, I was thinking about this world of endless opportunities. But then, in 1989, everything changed for me. I saw thousands, hundreds of thousands of people walking to the streets and taking and going to break that wall and saying, no, the impossible is going to be broken and we're going to break it. And they did it. And yes, the regime changed, and that was a big change. But for me as a kid, the biggest change was seeing that the impossible is possible. That it can be done, that it can be different, that we can change big things in life. And that was my first revolution. Then there came a big change in my life, and we moved to Israel. And I grew up near the Dead Sea in the desert, a very remote place, but it was the 90s. And and suddenly technology boomed and Israel was always a front of, in front of the technology world and the big part of it so everything spread very fast and I saw it happening I saw this thing happening and coming to change the world and I was part of it although again I was in a very very small place in a very remote place so being exposed to technology throughout my, my uh, adolescence and then I went to the army like everybody else does in Israel, I studied, I was exposed to different cultures and different ways of seeing life. And I was, I th well, they thought I was ready for that job, you know, what parents would expect you to do. But I don't think that was the reality for me. I, I wasn't really ready for that job. I wanted to do something, I wanted to, to change. I, I kept dreaming about these people on the streets making the change. And because technology was, was such a big part of everything that was happening, I knew the technology is here. Yes, it's cool and games and all that, but at the end of the day, it's here to make a good change in, in the world, to create impact. So I joined Videres Credere, which is today probably the edgiest human rights organization. I was the COO of this organization. I worked undercover for five years. Many people in the world know me by many names. And we equipped people in places where no one, but no one has access to, with little pieces of technology that they could record and document the things that are happening. Now think about it, we live in a world where we have everything is out there, everything is exposed. Real news, fake news, everything we know. Well, just so you know, there are many places where you know nothing about them. Because there are people that make sure that nothing will come out of there. And whatever bad things and atrocities that are happening to these people, they make sure that you don't know about it. But we change that. And using little pieces of technology, these people have a voice today. And you've all seen footage and images and recordings of these people, these brave people. You never knew it's us because we have to keep it secret. But they have a voice. And that was my second revolution. 
And then I became a father, and everybody said, okay, what's going to be next? Maybe now it's time for that job, for that being uh, like normal, just, you know, waking up in the morning and going somewhere and not getting killed maybe or not doing something really crazy. Well, I think you already know me and it didn't happen. <laughs> um, and then I, I thought, okay, what is, what is that next thing that it was untouched? And yes, we, what we could reinvent ourselves as humans, like create a real, real big change. And we live in a world where we create smarter homes, smarter phones, smarter cars, everything around us is getting smarter except us, okay? There is no technology that attaches to us that creates us smarter as humans. I met some friends and some people and we understood that at the end of the day, it's our senses that are responsible for everything that we ever created as humans. Everything. We went once on a, on, a, on a hill and we saw and we said, wow, this is where I want my house. And we built it. We smelled something and we decided to make a certain type of food out of it. We heard that bird singing and it was amazing. So we created music. Everything that we created, we created because of these senses. Otherwise, our brain is a processor it's the smartest thing that we know, but it would have been locked in a box with no way to connect to reality. It's our senses that create that connection and that interaction between us and what we call life. So think about it. In this room where we are now, there are endless things that we cannot sense. There are colors, there are sounds, infrared, the, the magnetic field of the planet, uh, pollution, subsonic, uh, endless things here, not there, not in space, in this room where I speak now, and we have no idea about them. Now imagine yourself if we could sense those things, if we could be part of it, we could create a completely different world, and we could upgrade and create a smarter humanity. So going back to my little north sense, I have it now for nine months. And yes, every time I face north, which is that direction, I get a little vibration. And that little vibration created new memories, created new feelings, created new ways of understanding space. I know that that direction is the direction of my home, is the direction of, is, is the way that my kid enters his school in the morning. Every place that I've been since I have the North Sense, I remember it by how it's located on the planet. And all these places are now little maps that are starting to connect together into my brain, into, into the way that I perceive space. So, if we had more senses as humans, we could live a much richer life experience we could understand things that we did not understand before. We could, we could solve problems that we don't have solutions for because we would sense those things. Now I, know, now I know that there is a lot of fear from technology and people say, yes, technology is going to take over and technology is going to destroy us and, and we're going to become the pets of our technology and all these things. I don't believe that. I've seen with my eyes, and I did with my own hands. I used technology to create change. And people around me, and people that are part of me, part of my life, and part of the things that I do, know that this is the truth. Don't be afraid of things that, are, that you've been told. It's all about the way that we tell the story. It's all about the way that we use the technology. It's us to decide how this world is going to be built. And it's us to decide what kind of future we are going to create with this technology. And technology is here to create good. And this is my third revolution. And I welcome you to join me. <laughs>